What is going on guys? Grave here. Today I want to do an updated settings video. The game has been out a while now. I have been playing a good bit as you can see here. Uh, we'll go to the combat record. Still around a 155 KD. It's about all I'm going to get in these sweaty lobbies. But uh, I've played a good bit. Played for four days, four hours, seven minutes. So I have been able to kind of tweak some of the settings from the past that I you know, did with the first video. Uh, changed a few things up. Not a whole lot, but there's also been some new things added in as well. Before we get into those settings, make sure if you're not subscribed to take a second, hit that subscribe button. Of course, if you are a subscriber, make sure you have notifications turned on. If you enjoy the video, smash the like button. And of course, be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliate here on the channel, GT Racing. Let's go ahead and hop right into these settings. We'll kind of go over these quickly because I've already done an in-depth video on these. I've been bouncing around uh, between 5.5 five and 7.7. Seven, seven. I'm back to 5.5 five as of late. Um, may go back up. 6.6 uh, six has been kind of the sweet spot, but as of late, it's not felt right. So I went back down to 5.5. Five, but I would always recommend, you know, between 5.5 five and 7.7. Seven, seven. If you can go up even higher, that's perfectly fine. All kind of personal preference there. When it comes to my low zoom sensitivity, I'm running that at 0.71. My high zoom sensitivity is at 0.75. Button layout, tactical uh, Bumper jumper tactical, what I've always ran. Uh, this way, I can, you know, I, I use a regular PS4 controller, so I, I don't have a scuff or anything like that. That way, I can jump, you know, and move around the map a little bit easier with these button setups. Also, uh, I talked about this in the past video. If you're want, want, wanting another good option here, stick and move is also a very good choice as well. Uh, when it comes to this, I always played flip, so I shoot with R1, L1, so the top buttons instead of the back buttons on controller. Of course, inverted look disabled, aim response curve. Now, this is one of the things that was added a couple weeks back. I do play on standard. Some people like dynamic. I did try dynamic in Modern Warfare, and it was not that bad. I'm not a fan of it in this game. Never been a fan of linear, so I just have stuck with standard. Of course, controller vibration is disabled. Target aim assist, of course, is left on enabled. Of course, this was something new we got yesterday in 1.07, and that was target aim assist mode. I have left this on standard. I will say Standard or Legacy are probably the two best. Something about Legacy and Standard both feel off to me, but personally, I've had better luck with Standard. Uh, when it comes to precision and focusing, if you're a sniper, you can drag scope like crazy with precision and focusing. It's almost a little broken. It's so crazy. So if you like to snipe all the time, I would recommend going with these two. If not, Legacy or Standard is probably your best bet. Like I said, I've stuck with Standard, but they both still kind of feel off at times. They feel a little bit weird. It doesn't feel like it always grabs like auto aim, aim is just supposed to. Uh, so it's been kind of strange. So you might want to just mess around with these. But like I said, if you're a sniper, precision and focusing are a bit OP and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when you put those on. You can drag scope, I mean, from left side to right side of your screen or vice versa very easily and just snap onto targets. It, it is absolutely crazy. Uh, ADS aim assist, of course, that is disabled. That's when you aim down sights. You are your aim will quickly move towards the closest target that of course is for campaign and zombies i have it off because i do i have been playing a good bit of zombies lately and i don't like that idea of having this on because then when i get into multiplayer it's going to feel odd uh air, airborne mantle behavior i have this to manual because i do not like automatic because i auto auto uh, mantle a lot of things in game that i don't want to so i make sure that if i'm going to mantle something i have to automatically doing it uh, be doing it uh ground mantle behavior of course is on press uh, aim down sight behaviors hold, steady aim behaviors hold, uh, armor behavior. I hit apply all that way. If you run armor plates, you know, in something like Warzone or whatever the case may be, even if you run the body armor in game, it will apply everything that you have. Uh, of course, you can cancel out of that. But if you do one by one, it kind of gets to be a pain to me. So I just like to have apply all on. Of course, vehicle uh, control mode has been left alone. That's aim based. Stick layout, of course, is left alone is default. Uh, left stick minimum input is five. Uh, maximum input threshold is 99 right stick is 6 and 99 the reason i have this on 6 is because my right stick is drifting a bit you're going to have to go into a uh, custom game get really close to a wall and kind of hold your uh, gun up or from the hip does not matter anywhere you can see if your aim is moving a lot of times it's really good to do this from the hip that way you can just kind of see if your aim is moving your character's feet are moving you want to bump this up some people may have a new controller some people's controller may be better you can bump this down. I mean, some people go low as like zero and two. Some people go like one and three. It's going to depend. Uh, I have to go five and six because my, like I said, my stick is drifting very, very bad on the right side. Old PS4 controller I've had for a long time. So it kind of is what it is. When it comes to the input thresholds, you leave both of those at 99. 
Um, controller sounds, of course, disabled. Auto move forward is disabled. Auto sprint is disabled. A lot of people use this. I'm not a big fan of it, honestly, but some people like it. So if you want auto sprint on, that's perfectly fine. Uh, sprint behavior is toggle. Uh, sprint cancels reload is disabled. A lot of people like to use sprint cancels reload. Depends on what you like. Uh, personally, I can just, you know, why, why or triangle, triangle, and, you know, just cancel my own reload. But some people do like to have this enabled. It's just kind of personal preference, but just kind of go with whatever you like. It is nice to get out of a bad situation. Sometimes you can go into a reload and kind of sprint, slide out, and it will cancel it. But the thing is, if you're empty, you're going to continue to uh, reload over and over. The one thing you do want to know is if you watch your ammo count in the bottom, as soon as your ammo count pops up that there's whatever. So, for example, if you have a gun with 30 rounds in it, as soon as it says 30, you can start to sprint. It will not cancel your reload. As soon as that number pops up that the ammo is in, that is reloaded. You will still have an animation on screen, so that is one good thing about that. Uh, of course, when it comes to parachute, auto deploy, that is disabled. That way I can open the parachute whenever I want. There are a few big maps in game where you can use your parachute, and I don't want it to uh, you know, deploy automatically. Equipment behaviors hold. Uh, interact reload behavior, of course, is tap to reload. Of course, when Warzone comes out, you may want to change these depending on if you are a Warzone player. When it comes to graphics, of course, I play on the basic day one uh, PS4. I have an OG PS4, so I don't have a lot of the graphic settings that you will on new gen or even on PC. But my out of bounds area here, I have it shrunk down to small as I can. You'll have to do this actually in your settings in your PS4 system uh, or, you know, whatever system you're playing on. Um, colorblind settings. I have changed these up a bit. Uh, my color, of course, is yellow. Your ally color, I do need to change this. Uh, I need to leave this actually and make my party color different. Just leave it on the default blue. The enemy color, I was running this on the bright pink, but I have decided that the bright green is a lot better. You can see enemy names even easier, but if you don't like the green, I would recommend the pink. Uh, it's a lot better than the kind of default orangish red color that's in the game. You can see people a lot better when ADS, in my opinion, with either the pink or green names. And the party color I left on pink, but I'm going to change to baby blue that way. You know, my ally color, if it's just randoms, and then my party color will kind of be close or similar to the same thing. Um, I do run my colorblind settings on Tritantinopia. Um, don't necessarily have to. I'm not colorblind, but that's just kind of the setting I've decided to go with. I kind of It doesn't really change the look of a lot of things, uh, of course, but you can go in here and, of course, then change up the different color settings for, you know, your the ones we just went over. Uh, when it comes to brightness, I am running my brightness on 70. It does look a little washed out at times, but personally, it makes me it makes it easier for me to see enemies. I do have a BenQ monitor. It is I've had it for a long, long time. Not the same brightness settings that some people may have on their monitors or TVs. You're going to kind of, going to, kind of have to mess with that to fit you know what you're playing on. Uh, field of view, like I said, I play on a day one OG PS4, so 95 works very well for me. I was on 90. I kind of bumped it up to 95. If I go 100 and over on this old PS4, I get a lot of frame drop. Some screen tearing at times depending on what you're playing on i would say between 105 and 110 if you're on a new gen console or pc if you're used to playing on pc on 120 you can definitely can go with that but i would say if you're on a new gen console definitely between 105 and 110 would probably work very well for you but personally for me on this old console 95 is kind of the sweet spot uh, ads field of view of course is the same i've not changed this it is affected in my opinion this is the best because aim down sites will zoom to the value closer to your field of view settings if you have this off, it's going to be zoomed out a lot more. So I like to kind of have this zoomed into what my field of view settings are. So everything kind of looks the same from, you know, running around from the hip to ADSing. Motion blur, of course, always disabled. Uh, when it comes to audio, my master volume is at 90. Music volume is at zero. Sound effects is 100. This is footsteps, gunfire, that kind of thing. Dialogue is at 55. And cinematics is at 20. You can turn this all the way off. I'll leave it on 20. Of course, there's a lot of the other things that's going on in game. Not footsteps, not gunfire. But... If this is up to 100, in my opinion, the game sound is way too loud. I've been running lately on Treyarch Mix. I've been bouncing back and forth between Treyarch Mix and Bass Boost. A lot of people like high, of course, depending on your ears, your headset, you know, what sounds you can hear. But personally for me, Bass Boost and uh, Treyarch Mix have been working very well. I did go with Super Bass Boost for a while, but it got where it was just extremely too loud. And I didn't really care for it. Some people, of course, were running on high boost like they did in Modern Warfare. But personally for me, Bass Boost and... Uh, Treyarch Mix are the my favorites. Of course, you know, like I said, you want to listen to this uh, and kind of hear for your hearing, for your headphones, whatever the case may be. But if you cannot decide on one, give those two a try. 
they really work out for me very well. And when it comes to everything else here in this list, nothing's changed. It's all default. Uh, of course, everything here is default as well, except for some of these things you can change down here in the HUD elements. I do have health bars hidden on my allies and have them shown on the enemy. Player names, of course, is a full name. The compass up top I have turned off because, in my opinion, not really that great in multiplayer now that we do have a mini-map back. Of course, when it was Modern Warfare, it was really nice because the mini-map was not the same. But, of course, if you're going to play Warzone here, eventually you may want to turn that back on. Uh, floating damage numbers is enabled. Zombie names and health bars, of course, all the rest of this is left to default. Keyboard and mouse, of course, I don't have anything like that. And, of course, that is pretty much all the settings we have here. Anyway, guys, let me comment with your thoughts. Of course, let me know what settings you're running. Like I said, I just wanted to kind of make an updated video because a few things have changed and a few things have been added in. I will continue to do these videos when they can, if they keep adding things in or if I change something drastically. And, of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you all next time.